welcome food and fitness lovers to Tina's Ageless Kitchen. I'm Chef Tina Martini. You might know me as the medicine chef. Welcome food and fitness lovers to Tina's Ageless Kitchen. I'm Chef Tina Martini. You might know me as the medicine chef. And today it's gifts from the garden. My favorite, dirt to dinner. Are you ready for a beautiful gourmet vegetarian meal? Well, first of all, we're gonna start by reducing some balsamic vinegar. And oh boy, there's nothing better than some good balsamic that's been really nicely aged. And we're gonna take that down by half so that it has more of a syrup consistency. And then we're going to put that over our beautiful portobello mushrooms. Now, portobello mushrooms really are proving, along with all the other mushrooms, to be great medicine. Longevity, enzymes, a great source of amino acids. Now, remember, chefs, protein is the most misunderstood of all human macro nutrients. Now, macro, Latin for large, are the things that we need the most of, and protein is one of those macronutrients. Now, we're probably wondering, well, where is the protein if we have no meat? And today is completely meatless. So where we're going to get the protein is where we always get the protein from amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks to protein. 28 amino acids to be exact, 19 of those are non-essential. What that means is that your body creates creates them without any help from you. The other nine are essential amino acids. Now, unless you're under the age of five or over the age of 80, you're not using histidine right now. We'll use that later or in our early development years. For now, we need to just worry about getting eight essential amino acids in our mouth. And guess what? This, the portobello mushroom, as well as other mushrooms, are complete with those essential aminos. So this is a great source. Now you can see that the portobellos have been cleaned here. So I've just got one here to show you how to do that. I'm just gonna take the stem off and you can see all the dirt that's on the mushrooms, which is a great thing. We're just gonna take a damp paper towel and wipe that dirt away. Use a spoon to just clean that frog or the gills right out of that mushroom. And that way, it's not going to turn mushy while we bake them. They'll remain nice and firm. And you can see I'm just kind of pulling that yucky kind of brown gill stuff away from the bottom of the mushroom. Just throw all that away. There's really no use for it. And when we cook it, it does tend to get mushy. All right, so looks good and we've already wiped the mushrooms down, so we're ready to go. Let's just kind of move that away. All right, with our balsamic reducing, and I just had a little bit in the pan, so it went pretty fast, so we're good to go here. I'm just gonna brush the mushrooms and put them on a sheet pan, and we will get our greens that we're gonna stuff our mushrooms with on the pan and ready to go. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in, we'll heat that up, always having our pans waiting for us. We're not waiting for our pans. Let's grab a sheet pan. And this one doesn't really need to be sprayed at all, so let's make some room. We'll take our prepared mushrooms, and you can kind of just brush these gills away. And then I'm just gonna take the reduction. Actually, let's move this over here, chefs. It'll be a little easier. And I'm gonna brush that mushroom with the reduced balsamic, and oh boy, does that smell sweet and delicious. You don't have to worry too much about getting it perfectly because we don't want to over vinegar our diner. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on that to give the nice flavor. And again, when we reduce the balsamic, it really turns beautiful and sweet. All right, there's that one. Let's go ahead and quickly brush the underside with just a little bit. And we can just pour that right over if we want just to make it go a little quicker. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that under and then let's get that beautiful gloss on top of the mushroom. All right, we're gonna saute the greens and everything's gonna go in the oven when we're done. So I'm just gonna pour that right over. Oh boy, does that look fantastic. Let's put that back and we'll set that here. 
All right, we're gonna get ready to stuff the mushrooms. So I'm just gonna turn them over so we can make little cups out of our portobellos. Let me see if I've got a towel down here. I'm still here. All right, clean the hands up. Let's get rid of the frog. And let's go ahead and put our shallots in. Purple onion will work here. And this is the stuffing that we're going to use to put in with our greens. All right, let's get a high heat spatula. Now I've got arugula and arugula is called rocket. Now that was the original name and you may still hear that. Remember not to put any color on your onions or your garlic. Let's just mash that garlic up real quick. Just take the side of your knife, chefs, and smack that garlic and just run the knife right through. I'm not gonna chop it up too finely because I like a little bit of the texture and we're just gonna soften the garlic so it will be fine on the palate. All right, let's just pick that up, put it in the pan and we'll soften that up and we'll save these two for later. All right, so the rocket, back to that. Now, in ancient times, this was used for virility and specifically for men's virility. That's why it's called the rocket, because it makes the rocket work better. It increases blood flow to the pelvis, and we all know what that's going to lead to. So let's go ahead and put this back on the fire. We've got our coarsely chopped garlic, and we're going to just wilt those greens. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of sherry vinegar. It has just a great flavor and a really great aroma. The good news is our greens are loaded with calcium, great source of calcium, as well as fiber and vitamin A. The vinegar creates an acidic environment. Remember, we can't uptake calcium unless it's in an acidic environment. So the, the vinegar is perfect. All right. We've got this sautéing, and that's, again, going to be our stuffing. I think I'm going to put a little bit more of our leaves in here, and you'll make it as fully stuffed as you like. That'll just take a minute, chefs. Our little cups are ready to go here. We've got our cheese, and I'm just going to put a little bit of the feta in, and I'm going to mix a little bit of the pine nuts. Now, great news on the pine nuts, gang. Did you know that the oil from the pine nut is often used in diet pills? Why? Because it's a natural appetite suppressant. So these little buttery jewels, and they are like butter on the palate, really help us to cut the body fat and make our body a more efficient burning machine. So pine nuts for everybody. And we're looking good here. We're nice and sauteed. And I don't want to take it too far. We don't want to overcook things. And we're just getting the cheese a little bit soft and melty. All right, now the cheese is also a good source of calcium. So you can see that this is a dish that is very high in that essential mineral. Now, not only does calcium show up to be great for our bones, but it also is showing up to help us fight cancer and get better sleep. I don't think we're sleeping enough in our society, gang, so anything that we can use to help us sleep better would be great. All right, so we're all set there. Again, I don't want to take it too far because we're going to pop these in the oven. So be careful. We're working with kind of some hot food here. So we're just going to use the tongs. Oh, boy, does that smell great. Get your tongs, and let's just put some stuffing right on our portobellos. It's okay if you're a little messy because we're just going to bake them and then we're going to take them to the plate so we can work on our presentation there. All right, let's go ahead and stuff the third one here and we can kind of top that other two off. All right, looking good. The cheese melts a little bit and we're going to finish that in the oven as I mentioned. Okay, that's it for that. Now we can just, you know, work this into the mushroom just a little bit. And we're all set and ready to go into the oven. We'll pop these in for about 15 or 20 minutes until the portobellos are nice and soft. We've got everything melty and delicious. And we'll be back with a beautiful roasted cauliflower. 
Welcome back. We've got our stuffed portobello mushrooms in the oven and we're going to wait until those get nice and tender. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and make another fabulous gift from the garden. So I've got some cauliflower here and I just chopped the florets up nice and small so they'll cook quickly. Now remember, if you want to blanch the cauliflower in some boiling water or a steamer real quick, of course it means less time in the oven. So it depends on how much time you have. If you want to quickly do it, blanch them before. If not, just go ahead and put them in raw and roast them. Nothing better than roasted veg and roasted fruit. Remember, there's only seven ways to cook anything, chefs, and roasting means high and dry. So this is what we're going to do with our cauliflower. Now I've got a stoneware crock that's already been sprayed with a little bit of pan spray of your choice, whatever works. And I'm going to put the cauliflower in and then we'll put something in to help it kind of roast and get some flavor. So that's all the way in. Now the cauliflower, of course, we've talked about the cruciferous family. Very powerful medicine, particularly against hormone-based cancers like prostate cancer, breast cancer, and that type of thing. The cauliflower really has a lot more medicine than even broccoli. And because it's white, I think we tend to think that it doesn't have as much medicine, but actually there's equal and internal lactone in here. There's also something called indole 3-carbonyls. Now, indole 3-carbonyls are like little Pac-Men, and they go into our bloodstream through vegetables like the cauliflower, and they clean off the free radicals or the damaging environmental pollutants from the edge of the cell. If free radicals can't cut into those healthy cells and do damage to them, well, it helps our immune system. It slows the aging process. Who doesn't love that? And again, the equal and the internal lactone work in tandem with the indole 3-carbonyls to balance and protect our hormone receptors. Very important with regard to many of the illnesses that we face today. All right, anytime I can do something vegan, I want to do that because chefs, we already know that the more we can reduce animal consumption and animal products in our diet, the healthier we're most likely to be. So I have something kind of interesting here that you may not be familiar with. And this is a vegan chickenless, if you will, vegetable broth. And yes, it is a vegan product. And they just come in little cubes like any bouillon. It's a little lower in sodium, so it may look familiar to you. But again, this is a chicken flavored product that has no chicken or animals in it. Now, I've just reconstituted that with a little bit of some hot water. Let's go ahead and set that down. And I'm just going to pour that right in our dish. Now, we don't want too much liquid because, again, roasting is generally high and dry. So we're looking to get some nice color on our panko crumbs that are going to go on top, as well as a little bit of roasty color on that cauliflower. Nothing's better than food that has that nice caramelized feel and texture and taste. I've got a little bit of lemon zest. And I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle just a little bit down into the pan. And then I'm going to put the rest in our panko crumbs. And that's going to give a little bit of moisture, which will help it crisp up. And it's also going to give that nice aroma. Uh, fragrant food is important food, isn't it? I've got a little bit of fresh lemon juice. And of course, fresh is always best, getting our bioflavonoids. But more than anything, our limonene, which prevents tumors from setting up their own blood supply. Remember, if a tumor can't set up its own blood supply, it can't grow. And your immune system will eradicate it naturally. So lots of good stuff happening was such a simple side dish. I've got a little bit of Italian herbs, but whatever you like, um, just some basil here would be great. Now I'm going to use the dry because we are going to roast it in the oven. So remember, if you're going to use fresh, it generally finishes the dish at the end so it doesn't turn black. The dry is perfect because it's going to be in the oven for quite a while and it'll release the essential oils and not turn an off color. All right, I'm just going to mix that in. Now, remember, we've got our gluten-free panko, and that's a terrific product that's on the market now. The gluten-free trend is big, and it really seems to only be growing every year. So if that's what you're practicing in your nutrition program, and a little bit of gluten-free helps us all to keep that kind of belly bloat feeling down. 
All right, so I've got the Italian herbs. I like a little bit more herbs, so let's go ahead and just mix that in. And then we're just gonna sprinkle this over. Now, if you were wanting to do some Parmesan cheese in here, that would be terrific as well. But again, we're kind of working on reducing the animal product. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that right over the top and it's gonna give us a nice crust. Now the gluten-free crumbs are usually made with a little bit of rice flour, and so we get a lot of the benefits from the rice as well. This isn't really a very refined product. This is more of a whole grain product, which I like as well. But it's so well done by these gluten-free companies nowadays that it really does give the feel and texture of a regular panko crumb. All right, how does that look, chefs? I'm thinking that looks really good. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the last little bit here. We've got a little bit left over. We'll put that to the side for later. We'll grate a little salt in there, grind a little salt in there, and a little bit of black pepper. So all kinds of medicine, but a really simple and fast dish that even the most difficult to get to eat our vegetable diner will find appealing, I'm sure. The lemon zest and the lemon juice gives a great aroma. We're gonna pop this in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. You wanna give it time to get nice and roasted and caramelized. Again, speeding it up to maybe 20 minutes in the oven, just blanch the cauliflower in some water. All right, those mushrooms are smelling delicious with that balsamic reduction on them and the sherry vinegar in our greens. I smell the fresh lemon here. We're gonna pop this in the oven along with our mushrooms and we'll be right back and it's cocktail time. All right, welcome back and it's cocktail time. Now you're probably wondering why we're in Tina's Ageless Kitchen drinking alcohol. Well, remember, it's everything in moderation. I don't think it really works for humans to deprive themselves. So if you like a little cocktail every now and then, have it and enjoy every sip. That's the important part. And again, let's just remember moderation. All right, so today on Gifts from the Garden, it is everything from the garden. And this is a really interesting drink that's very refreshing. I think you're gonna enjoy it. If you like cilantro, you're gonna love this. And cilantro really showing up on the research profile as great medicine. A pigeon in, the Harvard School of Medicine tells us, looks very promising in the treatment and possible cure for ovarian cancer. Now, ovarian cancer is one of the tougher ones, so lots of leafy greens for us to prevent that from happening. At least give us a better chance to build our immune system. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna put in a little bit of Persian cucumber, and I really like the Persian cucumber because you don't have to peel it, and it's got a really true, really fresh cucumber flavor. So this makes prep really easy because you don't have to skin it. Now the cucumber, very high in water content, and we don't touch on that enough with our vegetables and fruits. You get a lot of water from the food that you intake, and so the cucumber is one of the highest water content foods that we know of. That is gonna help us to keep that tissue plump and keep that immune system firing. Another thing that you may not know is that the number one cause of heart attack is dehydration. Most people are not aware of that. We think of saturated fats, no exercise, things of this nature. But the first and foremost problem for the heart being a muscle, remember when your muscles get dehydrated in the gym, they cramp. Well, your heart is a muscle as well. So we don't want that muscle to become dehydrated so that it seizes up and puts us into a heart attack. Very simple. Now, the cucumbers are in. I'm gonna do just a few of the nice whole cilantro leaves, and that's gonna look pretty in the drink. Just take the stems off, chefs, because stems in your drink really add a bitter flavor. So we don't really want to use the stems at any time with our fresh herbs. So let's put five or six of the leaves in. And again, I'm just kind of cleaning the stems off a little bit more. You can use your knife to do this and just give the cilantro bunch a little haircut if you want. Ah, a stem snuck in there, chefs. So let's get that out because we know that can make the recipe bitter. All right, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is muddle. Now here's the tool of the bartender trade, a little baseball bat, if you will, 
and it's got some texture on the outside. This is called a muddler. I know a lot of people have wooden muddlers and that's great too, but this is a little bit more sanitary as the wood tends to absorb the things that we're working with. So I like the stainless steel muddler myself. And what is muddling, chefs? Well, it's just smashing the ingredients that we want to extract the essential oils from. So I'm just going to get a little bit aggressive with our leaves and our cucumber. And you can already smell that aroma coming up. So just take a minute and mash that up. All right, lots of good stuff going on here. Now, what color is the prominent color in the glass? Green. What does green signify in the plant world? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll does a few things for the body. One of the main things is it rejuvenates tired tissue. So that's great news. It oxygenates the blood and really gives some oomph to those red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen, and that's what helps us burn body fat. So it all works together. All right, so we're all muddled here. Now to kind of move this around in the glass a little bit better once we've smashed it a little bit, I'm going to add just a quarter ounce or so depending on how sweet you like your drink. I like it a little bit tart as we're going to use gin. The simple syrup is what, chefs? It's just hummingbird food. So equal amounts of sugar and water cooked in a small saucepan until it's a syrupy consistency, and we can use that to sweeten a lot of different things. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of fresh lime juice, and that's going to give a nice bite and, again, some freshness. Got a little limonene and, of course, our vitamin C in there. And just stir that around a little bit, and let's take our muddler out, and we'll change over to a spoon. Now, I've got a little bit of gin here, whatever your choice is. We're going to put about an ounce and a half in there. And then let's go ahead and add some ice just to chill everything. I'm just going to swirl that around, and that freshness is so delightful. All right, so we've used our simple syrup to help us muddle our cucumber and our cilantro. A little bit of lime just to kick it up. A nice brand of gin, whatever's good for you. And I'm going to top it with a little bit of club soda. Now, doesn't that look refreshing? Now, there's a brand of club soda out that I like that's called Fever Tree. And Fever Tree is the champagne of club soda. It's carbonated just lightly, which makes it a little easier on our joints. Remember, carbonation really exacerbates inflamed joints. So you want to keep the amount of carbonated beverage that you consume to a minimum if you're experiencing joint pain and joint inflammation. All right, well, I'm sure you'll agree that this is a really delightful gift from the garden. Very aromatic mm, and oh so delicious. Well, I'm smelling that roasted cauliflower. Our mushrooms are just about done and we're just about ready to take it to the plate. So I'll see you in just a moment when we get ready for our presentation. All right, everybody, we're back, and we've taken the mushrooms from the oven to the plate, and you can see how gorgeous everything has come together. The cheese is melty. The greens are nice and wilted and soft. The mushrooms are tender and glazed with that balsamic. Pure medicine here, perfect for the vegetarian. If you want to make it vegan, just take the cheese out. That's fine. Now, the roasted cauliflower really came out nice and crispy, and we're just going to lift that right out and put it on a service plate. But I wanted you to see how tender, beautiful, and caramelized that dish comes out. The top is crispy and gorgeous. We're topping it off with our beautiful fresh cilantro and cucumber with a little bit of soda. It's all beautiful gifts from the garden today in Tina's Ageless Kitchen. Well, that's it. I'll see you next week. Here's to your health.